May I call upon um, our very own um, Elizabeth Antangan? Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Elizabeth Zemadala. Um, we have this uh, interesting thing in Powerful where the first uh, woman president of Powerful went by the name uh, Elizabeth, and uh, the current one is also going by the same name. So there's always a bit of confusion about the same names. Apologies for that. Um, no need to do the introductions. They've been done already, and uh, the CV is also in um, our packs. Elizabeth Oyos. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Sunga. Um, uh, sitting here with uh, a voice of uh, over 70 national farmers organizations representing 80 million smallholder farmers from 49 <coughs> countries and the five regional farmers organizations in one continental platform, uh, the Pan-Africa Farmers Organization, really gives me uh, a big shoe to speak about the challenges faced by farmers and farmers' organizations in Africa, and especially focusing on the issues of youth who are currently uh, uh, constituting uh, over 60% uh, of the continent's uh, population. And out of this, we understand that 41% uh, uh, is less than the age of uh, 15 years. And by 2030, the population, uh, the contribution of uh, Africa's youth population to the global population will be more than 42%. I want to take this opportunity to recognize uh, my fellow colleagues in the House uh, from the Pan-Africa Farmers Organization member networks. I think you can stand up for recognition or just wave to, to the audience. Because these are the people that are making things happen at the continent. Farmers and representatives of farmers in the house, you can just wave to there. Thank you. So again, I would like to appreciate uh, CTA for really uh, taking the initiative to support uh, farmers' organizations in Africa especially making sure that we bring our voice in the Brussels briefings. I know today we are holding the 57th one, but we've participated in more than 50, in more than 50 Brussels briefings, uh, meaning our voice has always been in Brussels, in, in, in the table of, uh, of uh, policy making in, in, in this uh, uh, Brussels uh, center of uh, policy making. And uh, to SCP and EU, I really want to appreciate your support, especially the financial support, under the strengthening of farmers in uh, Africa program that has that brought together this uh, uh, big uh, uh, federation of the farmers in the continent and with the new support under the farmers for SCP. So thank you so much and uh, please continue giving us the, the support. Uh, so when we speak about uh, Africa's agriculture, what really comes into our mind as, uh, you know, people who are in this house and everyone who is out there? Of course, we all understand uh, the challenges uh, that are faced by the African farmer, and I would not want to really to dwell more into that. But um, looking at Africa's agriculture, we all understand that it... Um, it, it is the backbone of, of Africa and more than 70% of the population are employed in this sector. But uh, it is characterized by uh, high labor intensity uh, because of low levels of mechanization. We have poor production uh, technologies. Uh, farmers are still using uh, uncertified seed. Uh, we have less fertilizer usage in some instances. Uh, we have uh, less than two uh, kilogram uh, usage per hectare in most of our countries. We are still dependent on nature. Um, most of our farmers are still uh, are depending on rain-fed agriculture. We have limited research, and in most cases where this research is done, it is always shelved and uh, doesn't reach the farmers. The extension is alarming. In, in some countries, we have a, a ratio of one extension worker to 1,800 households. The low levels of variation, the poor post-harvest management and storage facilities, the unstructured markets that are highly volatile, with, of course, uh, 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 you know, um, 
and, and uh, different prices. The weak regulatory environment that has already been eroded to by most of the speakers. The sector is mainly characterized by the elderly, who own, of course, the land in Africa. We are aware that uh, the youth in Africa don't own land, and so much of the land is owned by this aging population. And of course, we lack mentors and the role models. And most of these people who should be mentoring the youth into the agriculture sector have been employed in the public sector for more than 30 years. They have generated enough capital, but surprisingly, they don't have even an agribusiness of investment of less than $100. But they are proud to say that the agribusinesses of the youth does not live to celebrate the second birthday. I don't know whether you're getting the message. <laughs> and uh, our governments are also very comfortable trooping to China to look for debt instead of exploiting the hidden potential of the agriculture sector. Because the future of the continent is in, Af is in agriculture, and it is only Africa that has a potential of feeding uh, the world. So what should be done? Uh, we want to see uh, formal and informal skills uh, development uh, through capacity building in agribusinesses, in the very addition, of course, among other things. Uh, we need to see decentralization of uh, incubation services. And these facilities should be decentralized to the local levels. We need to see a lot of coaching, the mentorship, the hands-on skills training being given to the youth. We need to have improved access to finance. Not only access to finance, but this finance should be branded. It should be accessible. It should be affordable to the youth. We need to embrace and scale working agri -techs. I know there are a lot of uh, technologies. Uh, uh, just uh, a few days ago, uh, CTA launched uh, the Digitization of Africa report, which has uh, so many technologies that have been profiled on the continent. But it's not a matter of just uh, you know, uh, having these technologies in place and they cannot live to celebrate their second birthdays. We need to see how to scale up some of these uh, working models and scale them to be able to, you know, to promote the agriculture sector on the continent. We need to have these youth organized into farmers' organizations and cooperatives. Majority of the youth are still working individually, and that is why their power, their voices are not heard. But we need to see how to closely work together, make sure most of these youth are organized into farmers' organizations, into cooperatives, so that they can have a strong voice to influence policy and investments with the different uh, actors in the, in the agriculture sector. And um, so what are we doing as uh, the Pan-Africa Farmers Organization? Of course, through our member organizations, the Eastern Africa Farmers Federation, uh, PROPAC from Central Africa, ROPA, and SACAO. We also have a North African one, uh, UMAGRI, but uh, of course it has not been supported under this arrangement uh, because it, it doesn't, um, it, it, it is not an AU, uh, it is not an EU ACP um, uh, regional farm organization. So in terms of uh, what we've done as a, a continental farm organization, our focus has been on uh, leadership and making sure that uh, we, lever we leverage uh, the ground and level it to make sure that um, it, it offers opportunities to everyone democratically. And it's the reason we have uh, the first youth and female president speaking to you. Um, we have also, uh, in terms of uh, employment at regional farmers' organizations, uh, our secretariat has uh, youthful uh, employees uh, who interact and prepare farmer leaders to engage in policy, in advocacy, in investment, in partnership decision makings, and all these, are, and all these have uh, transferred a lot of knowledge and experience to the young generation. Uh, we have also, through, of course, our partners uh, like CTA um, and with the support of EU funds and SCP funds, we've organized exposure uh, and exchanges to, with, of course, with most of these partners to expose our youth uh, to some of these um, working models, of course, abroad and regionally, uh, to both the private sector and the development sectors as one way of, uh, you know, capacity building. 
we have also uh, working established regional platforms for youth entrepreneurs to facilitate business-to-business -business interaction and advocacy. And we, we know SACA, uh, PROPAC, and ROPA has really performed very well in, you know, in having these platforms up and running. In terms of uh, providing skills to our young farmers, we have uh, focused on developing the different value chains. And uh, ROPA, our West African organization, has, um, has done this pretty well in, um, in Mari, in the area of fisheries, and Benin in the uh, in cash and nut sector. And uh, through uh, digitalization uh, initiatives like Igranare in the Eastern Africa, we have built an ecosystem of partners that provide supply contracts, affordable credit and insurance, mechanization services and extension. The system uh, aggregates the farmers to markets and it offers bundled services. On this uh, uh, system, we have been able to reach 40% uh, uh, of our youth uh, out of the over 200,000 uh, smallholder farmers that the system is, is servicing. And through uh, direct business training, uh, mentorship, and partnerships, again through the Eastern Africa Farmers Federation, uh, with support from IFAD, we've been able to mobilize more than 8,000 youth. Uh, we've profiled them, we've uh, profiled and packaged existing opportunities within the region in East Africa. And uh, we've made uh, different contacts. We have also worked with experts to train them to develop business-ready uh, plans, uh, and we are linking them to potential investors in Kenya, Rwanda, and Tanzania. And we are also using uh, mentors to make, to make sure that uh, they get better business skills so that uh, you know, they can be able to, to pitch to potential uh, investors. And so, coming to an end, uh, what are the key messages that I need to put across? Uh, we have to invest in young people and systems if we are to have sustainable food systems. We need to understand that the youth don't need handouts. That talk is history. We no longer need handouts. We need to be handheld to contribute to sustainable food systems. And lastly, agriculture is the future of Africa. We need actions to match the transformation and the future that we want. I thank you for your kind attention. Uh, thank you, um, Elizabeth, for that presentation.